Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss differential phase shift keying technique. The first and foremost important thing to note about DPSK is that it can be viewed as a non-coherent version of binary phase shift keying. The transmitter of DPSK performs two basic operations. The first one is the differential encoding of the input binary wave and then the phase shift keying of the differential encoded data. Hence the name differential phase shift keying technique. Before I move on to the transmitter of DPSK, let me just explain a little bit about what is differential encoding. Differential encoding is one of the signaling formats that starts with an arbitrary initial bit. Here we have an example illustration for differential encoding. I have considered bit 1 or a positive level as the initial bit. So, in differential encoding, the information in the input binary sequence is encoded in terms of signal transitions. Particularly, as shown in the figure 1 here, we have assumed that the phase of the signal changes every time a symbol 0 is to be encoded. Whereas, whenever we have symbol 1 at the input, the phase of the transmitted signal remains the same. However, it should be noted that this is only a convention. And you can change the encoding by reversing the phase change for symbol 0 and symbol 1 respectively. What is also most important to note here is that in differential encoding, the phase of the current bit depends upon the phase of the previous bit. For example, since we are encoding symbol 1 and there is not to be any change in the phase of the current transmitted signal, it should be known what is the phase of the previous bit. That is why we say the phase of the transmitted signal for the current bit depends upon the phase of the transmitted signal during the previous bit duration. Coming to the second operation in the DPSK system, we have binary phase shift keying. In binary phase shift keying technique, to transmit symbol 1, we transmit the carrier as it is. Whereas to transmit symbol 0, the carrier is phase advanced by 180 degree. So, the transmitter of DPSK system performs both differential encoding as well as phase shift keying of the differential encoded data. Since in differential encoding, the phase of the current bit depends on the phase of the previous bit as well, the DPSK system will have its transmitted signals that will span over two bit intervals. As shown in the diagram here, let us assume that the initial bit be symbol 1. That is, symbol 1 is transmitted over the bit duration 0 to 1 TB. The DPSK signals can be generated depending upon what is the transmitted bit over the next interval which is between TB to 2 TB. If symbol 1 appears over the second bit interval that is TB to 2 TB, then the phase of the carrier signal remains unchanged. On the other hand, if symbol 0 appears over the second bit interval that is between TB to 2TB, then the phase of the carrier signal is phase advanced by 180 degree. Suppose the transmitted DPSK signal over the bit interval 0 to TB be denoted by square root of EB by 2TB cos 2 pi FCT. Let S1 of T denote the transmitted DPSK signal over the interval 0 to 2 TB. Please note, DPSK signals span over 2 bit intervals. Now, let us assume this is for the case when we have binary symbol 1 appearing at the second bit interval that is between TB to 2 TB. That is, S1 of T has this signal between 0 to TB and symbol 1 appearing over the interval TB to 2 TB. Now, in a DPSK system, the transmission of 1 leaves the carrier phase unchanged. Therefore, S1 of t can be given by the equation 1 here. You can see S1 of t is equals to square root of EB by 2TB cos 2 pi FCT. This is over the interval 0 to TB as we have assumed just here. And since symbol 1 is appearing over the second bit interval that is between TB to 2TB and the phase of the carrier remains as it is, we have the same signal appearing over the second bit interval as well. So, S1 of T over TB to 2TB is the same as between 0 to TB. 
Moving on, let S2 of t denote the transmitted DPSK signal over the interval 0 to 2 dB. Let us assume this is for the case when we have a binary symbol 0 at the transmitter input over the interval tb to 2 tb. This is exactly the opposite as that of S1 of t. In S1 of t we had symbol 1 appearing over the second bit interval whereas S2 of t we have symbol 0 appearing over second bit interval. The transmission of symbol 0 as we know phase advances the carrier by 180 degree. So, S2 of t can be given as square root of eb by 2tb into cos 2 pi fct over the first bit interval and over the second bit interval since it is 0 we have to phase advance the carrier by 180 degree therefore over the interval tb to 2tb it will be square root of eb by 2tb cos 2 pi fct plus pi. By analyzing equations 1 and 2 carefully, we will note that the signals S1 of t and S2 of t are orthogonal over the interval 0 to 2 tb. In my previous video, I had discussed about non-coherent orthogonal modulation technique. If I observe the difference between DPSK and non-coherent orthogonal modulation, I find that in DPSK, we have the symbol duration is equals to 2 times the bit duration and the symbol energy equals to 2 times the bit energy. This can be very clearly seen here. We have S2 of t spanning over 2 bit intervals. So, to find the average probability of error for DPSK, I will simply substitute these values into the average probability of error equation for non-coherent orthogonal modulation, which is given by probability of error equals 1 by 2 into exponential of minus e by 2n0. From equation 4, we have e is equals to 2eb. By substituting this into equation 5, I will find the average probability of error for differential PSK system to be probability of error equals 1 by 2 exponential of minus eb by n0. An important thing to know about differentially encoded sequence is to use the logic network which I will be explaining very soon. However, it is crucial to know at this point as to how to generate a differentially encoded sequence. I have given the equation here for the same. So, the current differentially encoded bit dk is equal to previous differentially encoded bit multiplied by the current binary input bit plus previously encoded differential bit bar multiplied by the current binary bit bar. It should be noted that this is a modulo 2 addition. By using this equation, I can create a sequence of differentially encoded bits given a binary input sequence. However, it is important to note that the differential encoding would require a initial bit and you can assume either a 0 or 1 for the same. Let us now move on to the transmitter and receivers of DPSK system. I will start with the transmitter part first. In fact, figure 2 shows the DPSK transmitter block which consists of a logic network and a 1 bit delay element, a amplitude level shifter and lastly a product modulator. The logic network and the 1 bit delay element are interconnected to convert the input binary sequence which is represented by BK into a differentially encoded sequence which is represented here by DK. This sequence is then amplitude level shifted and fed to a product modulator. This amplitude level shifted signal is then used to modulate a carrier signal to create the differential PSK modulated signal. Let us now move on to the receiver as shown in figure 3 here. At the receiver input we have the noisy received DPSK signal. This noisy DPSK signal is passed through a bandpass filter which is centered at the same carrier frequency fc as that of the carrier at the transmitter. This operation is performed to limit the noise power. The filter output and a 1 bit delayed version of the same are then applied to a correlator. Please note we have a multiplier followed by an integrator which is a correlator. It is also called as a product integrator. The resulting correlator output will be proportional to the cosine of the difference between the two carrier signal phase angles that are input to the correlator. 
This correlator output is then compared with a threshold of 0 volts using a decision device. If the correlator output is positive, then the phase difference between the waveforms received during the interval 0 to Tb lies inside the range of minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and the receiver will decide in favor of symbol 1. If on the other hand, the correlator output is negative, then that means that the phase difference between the waveforms received during the interval 0 to 2 Tb lies outside the range of minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and the receiver will therefore decide in favor of symbol 0. So, it is important to identify whether the correlator output is positive or negative. If it is positive, then it simply means the phase difference between the carriers that are given as input to the correlator lies inside the range of minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. On the other hand, if the correlator output is negative, then the phase difference between the inputs to the correlator will lie outside the range minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. And depending upon the value of L, we will choose symbol 1 as the output if L is greater than 0. Otherwise, we will choose symbol 0 if L is less than 0. Well, that is about a brief discussion on differential phase shift keying technique. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.